It is time for the music of the Mammy Sound Machine. As promised. Now, obviously, they did not play Gloria Estefan and her friends singing and dancing. Uh, Sean, you sent us the clip of Bad Boys by Mammy Sound Machine. I did. Yeah. I'm Was that the song used? Yeah, because Gorilla said, here's some bad, bad boys. Ah, okay. Well, that'll do what he said as he's introducing the... uh, A subtle clue. Yes. So, it's just random clips of stuff. There's a lot of bad boys. There's several good boys. Did you match it up? Yes, I I, I, I load, went to YouTube and I played Bad Boys in the background as I watched this clip, and not the they played this just played the Wrestling Challenge theme song on a loop here because the to edit it out for the uh, Peacock version. So there's a lot of bad boys, a lot of good boys. Big John Studd is in this, even though he's been gone for like a month. Paul Orndorff did an awesome pile driver in this. This is like Rob Van Dam, Tommy Dreamer level pile driver. A montage of dudes coming off the ropes and lots of Piper taking a baseball bat to the flower shop and that's it. Hey, you know what? Music videos are fun. More music video highlight reels. I'm fine with that. The Junkyard Dog meets Matilda. They have a conversation of some sort. That's when my wife walked in. <laughs> I'm sure, always, without fail. What's the most embarrassing thing on the show? What is this guy that's doing? That's the wife will come in. Well, he's talking to a dog. Hmm. Because he is a dog. He's a junkyard dog. So it's established they both like bones. And they decide to go to the ring to bite somebody. Bite on somebody. So the match is Moondog Spot, who is not in fact killed by Kamala. He's teaming with the Dream Team against the Bulldogs and JYD. Johnny V does an inset promo where he does not like the Bulldogs or the Junkyard Dog or the Hot Dogs or Chili Dogs. The only dog he likes... I'm like, okay, he's, he's in the corner of this match. He's going to say Moondog Spot. No. The only dog he likes is Doggone! <laughs> what? Davey Boy Smith and Greg Valentine begin this match by showing how to do an atomic drop to demonstrate it's not that hard. <laughs> I was certain that's what happened, dear. I thought it was a pretty good match. It was a good match. The longest yeah. match in challenge history. Really? I assume. Uh, I don't know. Five minutes? Didn't we see some pretty, like, didn't they have, like, a, I feel like we saw some, there some mo- real good match once. One or two actual wrestling yeah. matches on here. But, I mean, this one felt. We saw Savage and. Yeah, that Savage match. That was a clip. Uh, yeah. That was a clip. And I think that's actually. the this second half, yes. Probably went longer than that clip. But regardless, yes, there was a shine and a heat and a hot tag and a comeback and everything. And uh, JYD gets in there and he pins spot with a power slam. It was a fun wrestling match. Pretty much knew old Spot was doing the job there when I looked at all those men. In the very beginning, uh, Matilda went after Johnny V, and he took this beautiful dive out of the ring. Like He grabbed on the ropes, and he went over like Savage would have. It was nice. I wouldn't trust that dog. Hmm. It's Dynamite Kid's dog. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're not wrong. I don't know why it's so hard for a gorilla to just say, here's Ken Resnick with a special guest. He always has to have some wacky segue to throw it to Ken. Fans, here's some news of special interest right here in the World Wrestling Federation. He seems to say that all the time. Here's some news of special interest. Well, this interest was absolutely special. I think he has to keep it generic because he doesn't know what it's going to be. Then just say, here's Ken Resnick with a special guest. He may not even know it's Ken Resnick. It could be like Outback Jack. Like It could be... That would be news. Totally generic. So it's Resnick who begins by interviewing Lenny Poffo, who, who has clearly showed up not dressed to do a promo. And so Vince said, here, wear one of my suits. It's a Vince McMahon suit if ever I've seen one. He has his longest poem ever. It's Beowulf length about George Steele and Liz and Macho Man. Then it's George's turn to do a promo, but he doesn't want to. And man, if you thought George's promos were garbage when he wanted to be there, when you're trying to force a promo out of George the Animal Steel. I'm not sure if George the Animal Steel was the one being ribbed here. I don't know what the hell this was. I think it was Lanny. Because who invited George in? Lanny. Was it Lanny? Yeah. All I know is George invites him in, and Lanny Lanny invites George in, and George starts, you know, being all George. And and Lanny, like, he breaks character. He just cracks. 
And then, you know, they ask, they say, uh, or he, he demands Lanny read a poem, right? And he starts kind of grabbing Lanny or something. And Lanny said, he had some line about, I can't perform like this or something. <laughs> and then, like, he's he's kind of half smiling or whatever, but he's he's clearly not. I thought he had no idea what was going on. I had no idea what was going and on. And then he kind of reads, that much. He reads his poem, and then Resnick starts talking to George, who doesn't talk. And Lanny kind of steps into the background. And then they do the thing where, you know, George has got a journal or something like that, and George is going to write. And just a look on Lanny's face. He's like, why the fuck am I doing this? What is going on here? Who fucked me here? It's Vince, obviously. But this looked like one of those, I, I, I don't know, I feel like all these George segments, somebody's getting ribbed by somebody. I'm sure Vince McMahon got a really big kick out of the one they did with S.D. Jones a few weeks ago, and there's just going to be more. S.D. Jones, I'm pretty sure, was being ribbed. That's a thousand that guy that looked one. like he didn't know what the fuck was going on. I think maybe it's possible that, cause, because Lanny did call in George, I think it's possible that they had a plan and then, you know, the rib was George went into business for himself afterwards just to fuck with Lanny. But I've never seen Lanny so out of character because he's always, like, big and bombastic and he's got the big voice and he's always performing. And about halfway through this, he's just like, he totally broke character. He's like, I, I, I can't do this with you there. And he's trying to read his poem and everything. It was weird. This show was bizarre. It's like Vince just fucks around the entire time. I was always told TV time was valuable. And cherished. <laughs> Apparently not. No. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Uh, looking back, this was the go home show for Christmas. Maybe they figured nobody's watching pre Christmas weekend and just punted on the show and just do whatever the fuck you want. Do a four minute promo where a lady's trying to read a poem and George interrupts him and never it never finishes. Yeah, the uh, the the George Steele wacky promos have jumped the shark now. I don't need to see any more of these. It's pretty clear if you watch these shows and you think back to like that Hell in a Cell with uh, the Fiend and Seth that went to a DQ and the fans booed and Vince was laughing in the back, just howling at the response. I mean, I think the story is this guy always, he, he, he just wanted to entertain himself. Like, obviously he wanted to make some money. But if he could if he could arrange something fucking dumb to just make himself laugh, I mean, I think he's been doing it since day one. And he couldn't give two shits about the audience. <laughs> Just made it, make himself laugh. Yeah. As long as he's Mark's pay. Mm. Next week on Wrestling Challenge, Bobby Heenan interviews Randy Savage. Coco Beware. The Hart Foundation and Adrian Adonis versus the U.S. Express and S.D. Jones. I wonder who gets pinned in that one. Andre the Giant in the Snake Pit, which could be newsworthy. Kamala. And another big trios match, the Islanders and Siviafi versus Iron Sheik, Nikolai Volkov, and Butreed. Two, two big trios matches next week. And then the special musical review. Always fun. Always fun. I do like how they're slowly doing this Andre thing. Just every show, there's like 30 seconds on this Andre storyline. And they're not hammering your head. Just kind of subtle. But you know something's going on. There's something weird happening. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're making it very clear something weird's happening. And it's just every show, there's something involving Andre. And next week he'll be in the snake pit. So, so yes, there's only seven episodes left on hmm. Peacock. Seven? Yep. Hmm. There's wow. one left in season one and six more. Okay. It ends so, with February seventh, so nineteen eighty-seven. I guess through July, I guess. February seventh. When was Mania three? Uh, March or March April? March of March. Next year. So yeah. we'll have to watch like a month of uh, primetime wrestling. I can handle that. Isn't that show like three hours long, it was though? T- it was two. Okay. Maybe if, if, if you... I was going to say skip the Gorilla and Bobby stuff, but that's the best part. That is the best part. Yeah. All right. I think we can make it through a month of that. At least... We got to at least get to WrestleMania. Then we'll figure out what's next. Yes. Yes. You... Hey, guys. Did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.